finally. Alright, so I realize I haven't made a review in almost a month and you can talk to Senor Miguel de Cervantes about that and Dr. Jose Rizal. But I am now back from my self-imposed hiatus. Sorry I was busy with school and whatnot and we have a long backlog to go through. So first of all, let's talk about the Cinema One Originals 2014 festival which took place way back early in November. Uh, I was able to watch 9 out of the 10 um, films being screened in competition so I can't talk about Bitukong Manok but I will bring you my reviews for the first 4 movies I was able to watch so without further ado let's talk about Esprit de Cor. Esprit de Cor is directed by Kanakan Belintagos who is formerly known as Aureo Solito who stupid me is the guy who directed Ang Pagdudalaga ni Maximo Oliveros. I didn't realize that, I'm sorry. And the Spirit of Court is about these cadets who are training in this military training program thing. It's part of high school, um, supposedly in the days leading up to martial law. And you've got two cadets here, um, Private Abel, played by Sandino Martin, and Private Cain, played by uh, Larbi Policarpio, who both want, if I'm not mistaken, the position of Major, which is currently held by Mac, played by J.C. Santos. And they both try to kind of convince Mac that they are the best pick for his replacement during uh, these one-on-one -on -one interrogation sessions with him, but Mac has other things on his mind and he begins to turn these interrogation sessions into the, into pretty sexual things. Now right off the bat, the thing that really stands out about the Spree the Core uh, is that half his running time, I think, is um, spent in the interrogation room and each of these interrogation scenes are just done in one take. Just one one take shots that really, I think, nail the physical and psychological intensity of military training. You know, it's not just that these um, characters are doing their own push-ups and whatnot, it really is like they begin to feel this toll on them because they really do want this position, but the things they have to go through doing it is like, you know, kind of losing pieces of themselves along the way. What I also really like about these scenes is that they're able to capture the dark humor of military training. I was in some sort of citizenship advancement training in high school, everyone had to go through it, nowhere near as intense as this, but there really is this dark humor in it because, you know, the higher officers like kind of abusing and making fun of like the younger cadets. And on paper, the things they say are kind of funny, but the fact that they're directed towards you and they're really crass and they're really foul jokes, um, it really kind of makes you feel uneasy. And I don't think the tone is like messed up in any way. I really did think they're able to balance the dark humor with the actual, you know, psychological intensity of the stuff. Everything that takes place inside the interrogation room looks really great. Um, it's, you know, it feels very dirty, it feels very raw, but outside the interrogation room, interestingly enough, um, the movie takes on this like dreamlike quality. Like everything looks so pristine and it's like, you know, they're in a completely different world altogether. The acting in this movie is great also. I thought J.C. Santos was the best in this movie. Um, he's really, really terrifying as this major, but he begins to bear parts of himself. I mean, both literally and figuratively. Um, but you really do get the sense of him as this vulnerable person and you do end up kind of liking the dude even if he's like bullying these people into submission. And the other two, uh, Sandino Martin and uh, Larbi Policarpio, I thought they were really good also. They were very suitably awkward in their roles and you could just tell they were so committed um, both as characters and as actors because they were really doing their own push-ups. Um, they just, you know, had this sense of I want this thing so bad. However, in my opinion, I really wanted to like this movie more than I did because I thought everything kind of took a step down outside the interrogation room. You know, like the editing was suddenly kind of stranger, uh, the writing was kind of, it really did take a step down because outside the interrogation room they tried to force these religious or political metaphors, you know, how the two main characters are named pretty much Abel and Cain, I don't really understand why. I don't really get why it's relevant that uh, this whole story is taking place before martial law. Um, for me it was enough to have that whole psychological and physical intensity within the interrogation rooms. And you know, th there's some random instances of really awkward humor also suddenly outside the interrogation room. And also I thought the acting and the directing just kind of also took a step down, like it didn't feel like the actors were comfortable saying their lines like outside the interrogation room it felt very staged so for that i say that spree the core is still an okay movie though i still think there's more good in it than bad because the interrogation room scenes just impressed me so much so it's still worth checking out if you want to check that out and next up we've got soap opera directed by remton siega suasola um this is a story about pretty much two con artists um noel played by matt Daclan and liza played by natalie sitoy who pretty much lure foreigners to the philippines 
and then robbed them blind pretty much and like they scammed them with the promise of like a mail order bride or whatever um but then one day they lure ben played by chris paris to the philippines with the promise of liza becoming his you know mail order bride and then they rob him but then they realize that they kind of need his help because their son gets sick and they need his financial support so ben begins to help them not knowing that you know uh, noel and liza are still married and he really does begin to form a relationship with Liza, which really puts a toll on Noel. In my opinion, soap opera started off really shaky, but it kind of gets better as it goes along, um, mainly with the acting. Because with the acting, um, Natalie Sitoy and uh, Chris Paris, like, I didn't really feel like they knew what they wanted to do with their characters at first, because Natalie Sitoy is playing her character really kind of obviously. She's a con artist. And Chris Paris, like, I didn't feel like he was comfortable with his lines either. Like, it just felt very line reading me um, but eventually as the movie went on they really kind of found their footing I found um, that you know you could really begin to feel sympathy for Liza because she really just found herself caught in this situation and Ben also who you really do begin to care for like he's actually a nice person but the best thing about this movie is definitely Matt Daclan as Noel because his character is just so complex you know like he's just he's trying to fight between um, you know, he really does care about his son and wants him to get better and he can only do that if he, you know, supports this illusion of Ben's relationship with Liza, but at the same time, he hates the fact that he's losing his wife to this foreigner. However, again, I did not like this movie as much as I wanted it to because as strong as the acting is and as strong as, like, the main emotional core is, I found that the rest of the movie just was, it just really wasn't my thing because, you know, it, what this movie tries to do is it attempts to connect the main story with these two TV shows that the characters watch. There's a soap opera and there's this fantasy TV show also that they watch and I really didn't think they were necessary because what this movie does is it'll show um, scenes from those two shows and then go into the main story again but then they just kind of reiterate the same points that are made in the TV shows. So I would have liked it better if the TV shows kind of added context for the main story without necessarily having those same points repeated in the main story. I mean, it just comes off as unnecessary when they do it like that. I really also think that this movie could have moved a lot faster because it's really slow and I don't really see why it had to be really slow. Because uh, the director's first movie, Ang Damgo Ne Eleteria, is this 90 minute one take movie. Um, and it definitely has to be kind of, you know, life-paced in that regard. But in this movie, I really didn't think they had to, you know, go that slow. Because soap operas, you know, if they're trying to copy, you know, how soap operas are like, soap operas aren't really slow at all. I think if this movie moved faster, the emotional climax by the end would have hit much harder. Um, I really wish the director kind of used less static direction. Um, and overall, this movie did just lack production values, I think. A lot of the movie was out of focus and kind of dark. Um, like the sound sometimes got kind of wonky, so I would say that soap opera is kind of like just a mediocre movie. I mean, I really appreciate the ambition, just did not really work out in the end in the execution phase, unfortunately. Next up, we have Violator, directed by Doda Dial. Um, this is the only horror movie um, in the competition this year. Um, it stars Joel Lamangan, Victor Neri, R.K. Bagaching, Anthony Falcon, Andy Bice, and Timothy Mabala. And what Violator is, is that the first half of this movie is a series of unconnected horror vignettes. And then the second half of the movie centers on these five people who are stuck in a police precinct because there's a storm outside and there's a young boy detained at the precinct who may or may not be possessed by the devil. Violator has some of the best use of darkness I've ever seen in a Filipino movie. Um, the way they use darkness is that they really do end up obscuring a lot of stuff that you at first might want to see, but the movie is so effective at using the darkness that you don't want to see what's behind the darkness because it it's really does get kind of terrifying by the end. This movie is really also really uses like subtle disturbing imagery and disturbing sounds really, really well that you know by the end of the movie it is very, very scary, I think. This movie is very weird, that's for sure, but I don't really think it's you know kind of confusing because of the weirdness. It really does become really creepy. And as for the unconnected vignettes at the start of the movie, I really did... I was interested in how they were kind of connected thematically. I was trying to figure it out, although I didn't really figure it out by the end. The acting is great also in this movie. Uh, Joel Lamangan, who most people know as a director, I actually think I like him better as an actor because his cop character here, you really get a sense of um, he's been through a lot. He conveys his whole history through his character and he like knows... He, he's like the guy in the, in the movie who really knows 
what to do in the situation, but at the same time, he's still kind of, you know, scared also. Timothy Mabalot plays the young boy who may or may not be possessed by the devil. Um, the way he plays his character is very theatrical, and I really think this would not have worked if another director was, you know, taking charge of this movie. But um, the director, though, the Dio, I really think his in-your-face approach really worked and helped uh, Timothy Mabalot's performance kind of shine, because the way uh, Dio directs this movie is so... You know, it's just so unhinged, you know, and it's like he just does not hold back in showing you things even if it's still obscured by darkness. However, this is where I will say that this really was not my kind of movie. I mean, I still liked it, it's just that it's hard for me to appreciate experimental movies yet. Um, and this is definitely like the most experimental movie among the ten. Um, I, I would have rather had this movie be just entirely the police narrative or just a series of unconnected vignettes. like. Because these two were paired up in the same movie, the unconnected vignettes just feel like filler, you know? They, I didn't really see how they played into anything. I mean, thematically, they were still disturbing, but like, I don't know why they were there. And honestly, the police stuff really didn't kick in until the, like, ending, because, like, the, the way they set up the police stuff was a bit slow and kind of boring, honestly. Um, and I kind of wish that some of the cop characters were a bit better defined. Um, so yeah, this is not my kind of movie, although I can recognize it for, you know, it's what it, what it does right. So I will say that Violator was an okay movie. And then we have Hindi Se La Tatanda, directed by Male Javier, starring Kian Cipriano, Mara Lopez, Ketchup Isebio, and Don Jimenez. And what Hindi Se La Tatanda is about is about these four friends who like science or something, who travel to the province to investigate a reported UFO sighting that took place like decades ago. Okay, I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything about this. Uh, the only saving grace in this movie, I thought, was Ketchup Eusebio. He was hilarious in every single scene he was in. And not just him being funny, he was really genuine in the way he was acting, like, among everyone. Like, he really added that realistic, um, relatable flavor that was lacking in all the other characters, because everyone else just seemed kinda high, and it was all very in-jokey, but like Ketchup Eusebio, whenever he was on screen, you felt like you were actually invested in the movie. The rest of this movie, though, I just really did not like it. Um, for one, you can't see a thing in this movie. Like, it was so dark, not thematically, but visually. I mean, like, I don't know why they couldn't have spent some of their budget on, like, an extra light. Because most of this movie takes place in at nighttime, and good luck seeing things. Um, and whenever you have an, an interior shot, also, you can't see anything because of all the walls closing in or whatever. This movie also does this thing where it has this different aspect ratio. I don't know what exactly it is, but like, it's sort of narrower than the normal aspect ratio. But you know, when you shoot a movie in a different aspect ratio, you, you know, it still has to be kind of framed properly. But here it didn't feel like they filmed it in this aspect ratio. It felt like they filmed it in a normal aspect ratio and then cut off the top and the bottom, and what happens when they did that, like, you started, like, the faces of people started getting cut off in places and you couldn't see properly and really just took me out of the movie. I mean, if that was a deliberate stylistic choice, it was a bad deliberate stylistic choice. The audio also is messed up, I don't know why they, again, couldn't have spent a bit, a bit of money on, like, an extra mic or something, and the way this movie's edited also really just kills any flow to the movie, it just feels like a bunch of random you know, conversations and whatnot, and it just, you know, by the ending, you're not invested at all. The way this movie is written also, I just really didn't like it, because, you know, these characters talk about science a lot, and the way they talk about science is so unbelievable. You don't believe a word that's coming out of their mouths. They sound high all the time. And when these characters have normal conversations about, you know, their relationships or whatever, again, you still don't buy it, and, you know, it, the conversations are pretty much annoying, because it's so in-jokey also. It feels like you're watching a group of really closely knit friends, but you can't, you know, you're not allowed to really get what they're saying. It's just, they're just talking amongst themselves, and it's just, it really shuts out the viewer. I can recognize that the director, Malay Javier, was really trying to go for this old school feeling with the score he was using, with the visuals he was using, but in the end, it just really did not work. It just felt like one big in-joke, and I really, really didn't like it. I thought Hindi said that that and that was a bad movie. Alright, so those were my reviews for the first four movies of the Cinema One Originals Festival. Uh, I'll come out with the, f the next five uh, reviews tomorrow, hopefully. Um, so yeah, what do you guys think of the Cinema One Originals Festival this year? What do you think about my thoughts on these movies? Whether you agree with me or not, please leave me a comment. Let's have a conversation.